Obama was in the Rose Garden today with the Pope. And one thing that immediately hit me is Obama thinks he's God's gift. He really does. He thinks he's so special and unique. And yet he's not in any respect. Here in part is what he said. Cut five, go. You remind us that in the eyes of God, our measure as individuals and our measure as a society is not determined by wealth or power or station or celebrity, but by how well we hew to Scripture's call to lift up the poor and the marginalized, to stand up for justice and against inequality, and to ensure that every human being is able to live in dignity because we are all made in the image of God. Well, that sounds very good. Is that what Obama's done in this country? More people in poverty, less people working, the medium income down since the 1970s? Is that what Obama's all about? You know, folks, Milton Friedman said, whenever you have capitalism, you have freedom. He said capitalism is a necessary element of freedom, not the only element, but a necessary element. But I would add an attack on capitalism is an attack on freedom. You have people all around the world, particularly in these socialist paradises, these totalitarian paradises, the third world among other places, trying to come to the United States, voting with their feet for freedom and capitalism. At least theoretically, they want to come here. Millions and millions of people of all races. Obama and the Pope seem to think that if some people benefit, then some are harmed. That's not the way it works. Capitalism is the most humane economic system of all economic systems. The converse of capitalism is a growing centralized police state. The usurpation of our constitutional system, spreading poverty and despair through redistribution, and the dehumanizing of the individual. Political and intellectual elites today are leading this country over a cliff. Isn't it interesting we spend virtually no time exposing socialism? No time. Free market capitalism doesn't produce totalitarianism. Socialism is an essential element of various tyrannies. National socialism, Marxism, so forth and so on, statism generally. Socialism is amorphous. Its advocates are never required to defend it or explain it with particularity. Instead, it's promoted as something that's fair, that creates social justice gives people free things. It's humanistic. It's equal. Outcomes and results are almost irrelevant. Socialism is, folks, an assertion, a claim, a demand. To the extent there's equality under socialism, it's an equality of destitution. It's a conformity. Capitalism understands man's imperfections. Socialism insists on the perfection of man. Capitalism respects individuality. Socialism demands conformity. Capitalism empowers the individual or groups of individuals. Socialism empowers a ubiquitous leviathan. In capitalism, the individual is master. In socialism, the state is master. Capitalism is about voluntary arrangements. Socialism is about coerced conduct and arrangements. Under capitalism, decision-making is dispersed. Under socialism, decision-making is centralized and exercised by a few. Capitalism relies on the people making their own decisions. Socialism relies on a beneficent mastermind or masterminds making de decisions for the people. Capitalism is compatible with constitutionalism. Socialism destroys the constitutional order. And I can go on and on. I was just writing these things about 15 minutes before the program. 
thinking about how we never, ever, ever debate socialism. Instead, we are constantly having to de defend capitalism. Capitalism, the right to private property. Capitalism, the right to defend your private property through due process. Capitalism, the right to, to be wealthy if you seek to pursue it or not. Voluntary trade, voluntary commerce. Imperfect, yes. Man's imperfect. All institutions are imperfect. Capitalism is imperfect. But it's the most perfect of imperfect models. Because rather than trying to diminish the individual, rather than trying to coerce the individual, rather than trying to destroy the individual, it allows the individual to express him or herself as he or she wishes, pretty much, without dictates from politicians and bureaucrats.